And good afternoon, good evening, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this edition of Bulls versus Bears, a weekly forex forecast. My name is Dr. Greg McLeod, and I am CEO and founder of Elite Traders University. We are an organization dedicated to help traders become professional traders in 90 days or less. www.elitetradersuniversity.com. Go ahead and check out our free masterclass, also a free ebook uh, that you can have and uh, learn more about what we do and how we can help you become a professional trader. Okay, let's go ahead and get right to it. I'm going to share my screen. And right here, we're going to share screen number one. And let's go ahead and share. And we'll start with the... Uh, uh -oh. We will start with... We will start with... We will start with... Hmm, huh, interesting. I will open up a brand new window and it just closed on me. Okay. Okay. There we go. That's right. All right. My market heat map. This is the range of currency pairs by percentage change. Tell us what's hopping, what's popping, what's dropping, what's not. You can go to www.mymarketheatmap.com for 50% off. And uh, one of the tools that it's a couple of tools that are free actually in the front. We give you one of six powerful heat maps right now. The market's uh, kind of dull right now. It's kind of uh, uh, the dollar pairs are up slightly and Kiwi dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar are all, all dropping. Okay, so let's go ahead and show, uh, it might say no show here. Just go ahead and click this, we show some more and we see what's coming up for this week for the Forex forecasts. And so, we are going to look into our economic calendar and we can actually, I'm probably going to log in to get in here and get into our economic calendar here. And I have to log in and log in. Don't look at my password, dot, 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 dot. And let's go to the heat map. And go to actually we we'll go to the economic calendar first. And uh, you know, it was one of the most overlooked tools in our arsenal. You know, people look at order blocks and moving averages, not that and and all the kinds of different things that things that I don't necessarily uh, endorse. But what I do endorse is uh, the economic calendar, right? And the reason why is one of the most overlooked tools because it's not very sexy, right? Uh, it doesn't have all the, the red lights and green lights and the arrows and things like that. It requires you to, for you to use your brain to kind of figure out that news is a big driver of currencies. And so if there's a news item about a specific country, then the, the currency for that country will be most active. So I call it fun with flags. This is like the show that's on Big Bang Theory with uh, Sheldon and his girlfriend, and they have this the fun with flags. Well, our flags here, we're looking our, or we're looking for financing with flags. So we can see that the Wednesday, uh, May 24th, we have a high impact item. These economic announcements are, you no, know, they're categorized by either a high impact item, a medium impact item, or a low impact item. And we look at, I look at the high impact ones. Some people can look at the medium term impact ones. I sit the filter. And I said to filter, I want to see the high impact ones, right? Um, and so now I get to the G7, the big countries like the UK. Inflation rate year on year comes up on May 24th. This is uh, the 22nd of May. And so that'll be on Wednesday. The pound will be in play. Uh, forecast call for an 8.3% forecast a decrease from the previous number of 10.1. And so we can see the, the pound has been in a downtrend a little bit. So we can see probably a further depreciation in the pound versus the U.S. dollar, okay? Moving on along at 4 a.m. on that same day, we're going to have Euro IFO business climate and it's going to be out of, the, out of Germany. That's a German flag. Germany is one of the largest, uh, most powerful econ economies in the Eurozone. Um, previous number is 9.6. We're going to look for a fall to 93. And that could be a continual drag on the Euro. Um, at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we have the FOMC minutes. FOMC stands for Federal Open Market Committee, which is our United States Central Bank. 
They don't like being called a central bank. They call them a monetary, you know, federal open market committee, monetary policy. It doesn't even spell bank, but that's what it is. Trust me. Okay. The minutes are really, uh, they, they tell the meeting, uh, the what was discussed in the last meeting, why they hiked uh, rates, will they hike more in the future? Um, and so we can find out the, the mindset, the rationale, why the, the, uh, the members of the, meet, of the committee came to their decision to raise rates about what they saw in the economy. They're going to look at those minutes. They're going to disclose those minutes. And the, the currencies usually move in accordance with what those minutes are showing. So um, now that's at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's when they usually release Fed announcements. And that might take some something out of the market. The market may be dull going into that time. So you might see these two economic announcements that came in earlier. They came in. Um, they might not do anything to the market because they're waiting for the, the FOMC minutes. There's a lot more. There's high priority items and there's super high priority items. Things with, involving central banks are going to be super high. So FOMC, um, I would just wait till 2 p.m. I probably wouldn't even wake up to trade any of these because with an FOMC in the middle of the day, uh, the markets are probably going to be flat going into that. Okay, Normally, usually, right? People say, well, Greg, aren't you up trading? It's like, no, if FOMC on that day, no, I'm probably you no know, going to the gym or something. Um, Thursday, May 25th, 2 a.m., we have the GFK Consumer Conference of Germany again. It's supposed to have fallen from negative 25.7, actually increased to negative 24. Uh, consumer confidence is a big driver of the currencies and also stocks. And so we could see some volatility there. Okay. Now, even though you may have economic analysis may be more positive, more negative, they may give you a short-term pop, but it's really important to know what the trends are. Right now, the dollar is in the driver's seat because Jerome Powell and the FOMC continue to hike rates in, uh, in an attempt to fight off inflation. And by doing that, it has made all assets drop in, in, in versus the U.S. dollar, including your crypto, including gold. Um, and also what's being on, that's on the horizon is the debt ceiling. That's a really, 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 really big thing. If I hear about what's a debt ceiling, what's a debt ceiling? Basically, they put a ceiling on how much money that the United States government can spend, like a budget. Okay, I don't, I know it goes beyond belief that they even have a budget because they, they they spend like drunken sailors spending thousands of dollars for hammers and for toilets and overpaying for contractors for different things. You know, fiscal irresponsibility, fiscal responsibility in the United States government just don't go hand in hand, but they do have a limit, okay? And that limit is called the debt ceiling. They will not spend more money than they tell themselves they can spend, which means what if they go past the debt ceiling or if they don't allocate any more money, that means the government runs out of money. Think about it. The government runs out of money. Well, you know, they're not going to uh, be able to keep national parks open or maybe uh, you know, paying law enforcement or TSA or paying for federal programs or paying for uh, retirement, paying retirement payments, paying uh, you no know, daycare, child care or any of the social programs that we depend on or other people depend on. Well, those will not be funded. And so people will have to like be at home. Now, they're trying to pass an amendment that says that the congressman shouldn't get paid if the debt ceiling um, is not raised. OK, now they have to raise it because they're not coming. You know, the only money they have coming in is taxes and taxes are are not enough actually to pay their debt. That's why we have a national debt. But they try to slow it down by saying they can only spend so much in a given period of time. Well, now they're up against that. And all they're going to do is raise the limit, give themselves a bigger credit card so they can keep charging and keep kicking the can in the future. So really, it's kind of a moot point. Um, they're making this a lot, this battle. Um, you no, know, they you know the Republicans want to make Biden look bad, which is not too hard. Um, by you know, by saying, hey, you're going to let the, uh, the whole country go into default because of 
because of your ineptness or something like that, when really it's them holding hostage to by saying that you have to use draconian spinning and cut everyone's every every all the vulnerable people's checks in order to you know reward billion dollar oil companies. Okay. I mean, this is the both side. I'm apolitical, so don't write me any things about being red or blue or anything like that. I remember I chose green. Remember, gang in the you know, colors, colors, South Central LA, blue or green, uh, blue or red. I chose green. I choose green here too. Okay. And uh, so they're all both trying to make each other look bad. The problem is that it will, you know, people who work for the government, people who have maybe work in some type of an office or work in some type of administrative branch or providing social services, they're not going to get their checks either. So, um, so raising the debt limit is just an arbitrary kind of line that they have to raise in order to keep the government running. Because it's, you know, having a budget when they're already $21 trillion in debt, it's like, it's just an exercise in futility, really. Anyway, um, so anyway, this is all this represents for us as traders as an opportunity, because if they do do not raise the debt ceiling and the Amer and U.S. does default on its debts and they don't pay their creditors, that's going to cause the uh, trigger probably an S&P downgrade of U.S. debt. So we'll lose credibility in the world, but we're still the largest, most liquid market in the world. People are going to get very afraid and they're going to buy the U.S. dollar. As crazy as it may seem, the dollar are, is set to rise um, in case of geopolitical unrest or any type of economic disaster. Even if the disaster happens in the U.S., the U.S. dollar is it will benefit from this. Okay, And so I know it's counterproductive. Saying, well, if the U.S. government is going bankrupt, why would anyone put their money here? Um, and that's why you don't have a billion dollars, because if you would realize that we are, you know, compared to what? OK, <laughs> the U.S. government is, is, is inept compared to what? Oh, China or some other government. Uh, we're actually the cleanest shirt in a dirty basket. So do, do, you know, you, is this the best system we have? It's the best system in the world. And even though with all of its flaws, it still works if you know how to work it. Right. So I'm not bashing any. I would never want to be under a British system or a Canadian system or a French system or a, you know, or a Mexican system or South American. System. I'd rather be under the U.S. system because there, you know, there's rule of law. There's some disorder, but it, nothing's perfect. Right. So go USA. And with that, we know how to play the game. Don't play the game that, oh, the U.S. dollar, if the debt ceiling is crumbling, we're going to run to the Bitcoin. Because it's not, they're going to, they're going to run the U.S. dollar. The big Bitcoin and crypto is not liquid enough. In fact, there's probably a couple of billionaires, a couple of that, that a couple of you know multi billionaires that can possibly control the whole Bitcoin market if they want it to. Because it's not that deep in relative. Yeah, it's five hundred. You know, five hundred billion dollars, Greg. Yeah, it's half a trillion. But you know, the the the, the uh, crypt. I mean, the forex market is six point one trillion. And a trillion is a thousand billion. So six, you have six thousand trillion, six thousand billions versus five hundred. Hmm. I don't know. Five five hundred billion. One uh, not even half. You know, five hundred billion. Not one a half a trillion. Okay, half a trillion versus six. And the U.S. and uh, the, the forex is much more liquid than that. So with that said, you no, know, we move down to Friday. We've got. Um, uh, the retail, retail sales out of the UK, and it's supposed to increase from negative 0 0.9 to 0.4%. And so the British pound will be in play Friday at 2 a.m. And, and also off a few hours before that as well. Personal income the month on month and personal spending month on month. It's supposed to have increased from 0.4% and 0.4% relatively uh, speaking. And of course, PCE uh, index is supposed to have remain unchanged 0.3. Durable goods supposed to drop from 3.2% to negative 1%. Um, so we have a mix of positive and one negative data point. Um, now I would look to trade the euro here, but uh, you know, we might see maybe a momentary. If we have good news, it'll probably be bad news for the dollar, 
The dollar rallies on bad U.S. news. Dollar is a safety play when things are bad. People run to the dollar. Okay, very important for you to understand that. So if things are bad. Don't th people think, oh, if the dollar is bad, something bad in the U.S., we're going to run to Bitcoin. No, because Bitcoin's priced in dollars. So guess what? When things get bad, Bitcoin actually goes down. Dollar goes up. Now, if things got really good, let's say they stopped cutting, uh, stopped raising interest rates and inflation is down and the stock market was rallying, then we would see the dollar naturally drop off and then Bitcoin would rally, right? And we might be... If we do get good news, now the debt ceiling is a bad news thing, but if they do come to an agreement and they say, yes, we're raising the ceiling and we're, we're and the Congress agrees and they sign it into law to raise the, the raise of the, the debt ceiling, that's gonna be super, super good news. And guess what? The stock market's gonna rally. The dollar is gonna drop. Bitcoin's gonna go to the moon, go back to 30,000, and everything is will be great. Because but we have this overhanging thing, this debt ceiling is like a dark cloud that's hanging over the market. Okay. So once that, and you know, and the thing about it is at its darkest time, when they say, oh, we're going to default and the recession's coming, usually at that point of time, at the darkest hour, that's when things turn around. So you might want to maybe nibble at Bitcoin, maybe nibble at the euro, maybe nibble at stocks. Because any the, the risk of something more bad coming out is already priced into the market. You know, the market's been kind of down. The dollar's been rallying. So we've already kind of priced in. The market is a discounting mechanism. It doesn't react right away sometimes to stuff. It already priced in. It already knows, okay, things are bad. And then everything drops. And then when they actually say, things are actually really bad. And then everything goes the other way. Okay. And this is called a discounting mechanism. So you may say, oh, wow, the FOMC is going to raise rates. I'm going to get long dollar, right? That's like the wrong time to do it because they they buy the rumor of the event happening and then they sell the actual, the actual event. So you might see the dollar actually drop when they actually hike rates. And you go, what happened? You know, oh, they, 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 you know they 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 hit my stops and they're dishonest. It's like no, you're just your timing's off, right? Your 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 timing is off because you're zigging when they're zagging, and that's what we teach at Lee Church University: how to zig when they're zigging and zagging when they're zagging, right? Okay, so we've covered the the picture again. All this is going to be the Fed, the Fed's going to be the the chief thing of all things here. Fed minutes. And then also the debt ceiling, because that is not a scheduled event. They could announce something on the weekend. They can might announce something tonight or tomorrow. Uh, but they're going to play chicken with this thing. I mean, they're basically like on the cliff with two cars approaching the cliff and somebody's got to jump out of the car, right? So they're going to play chicken with this as long as they can to do as much political damage to the other side. They'll say the Republicans are stubborn and won't do anything. And they'll say Biden is senile and he won't do anything. They'll go back and forth, you know, and they'll blame each other. Biden will say, oh, well, the reason why we didn't have an agreement is the Republicans. And the Republicans will say, see, we try to work with the president, but he, he just won't cooperate. So it's all being used. The theatrics is used to punish the other party and to gain political advantage. And guess what? You, if you're not a trader, you're a pawn in this game. And that's why it's important for you to learn how to trade, to go to Elite Traders University, to sign up for a free strategy call with one of my uh, team. And if you're serious about investing your, in yourself and changing your position from a pawn to a king then, or queen, then you need to go ahead and go to EliteTradersUniversity.com, click apply, sign up for the free masterclass, and find out more. Okay, with that, let's get to the technicals. Okay, Lisa, okay, I'm tired of this. Let's see some charts. And I know what you're talking about. Let's see some charts. So I'm going to pull up some charts. I know I got to do some cleaning here. Make, oh, this is, and this is how we were like totally tearing this chart up the other day. The other, I mean, we're just every line. Okay, we're going to start the Dixie, the DXY. That's the US dollar index. It's an arrangement. 
currency. It's a, a, a basket of pairs versus the US dollar. Move all the drawings. And here we go. We're going to start with a monthly chart. Always start with a big 50,000 foot view. And uh, we can see that uh, the dollar index has been moving sideways for four months. One, two, three, four, five months we've been moving sideways, right? But we we have found support, found Fibonacci support. And we are bouncing off that support, right? As the dollar is strengthening. Dollar is in an uptrend with higher highs and higher lows. And that just tells you that's that once you know how to trade the dollar, trade the US dollar, then you know how to trade all the other currencies. You know, you know how to trade the the, the dollar CAD, you know how to trade dollar Swiss, you know how to trade pound dollar, US dollar versus the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, Swiss franc. You know how to trade seven currency pairs once you understand how the dollar moves, right? How the dollar moves. And, that's one of the courses that we're going to have we have available. And if you're interested in learning about that, you know, go ahead and send me an email, and I'll I'll send you how you can get access to that 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 class. There is a cost for that class, um, but if you're interested in just learning about the U.S. dollar and how it moves and how you can control seven currencies just by learning how one currency moves, then uh, write me at gregandleetradersu.com, and I will send you the uh, um the cost on that all right here we go so we got the dollar bouncing at the 50 percent retracement on and we have a, a higher trend green candle we're in a high trend this is a monthly chart drop down to a weekly chart and you can see we have um, we have been dropping 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 now we're bouncing and we are doing three day or three weeks into an upward move a three week upward move each bar represents one week of time this is a weekly chart we can see that we are moving on up like George and Wheezy after uh, hitting down bottom, scraping the bottom here, and we have an uptrend. And that uptrend looks like it will continue to move. Let's move on down to a daily chart. So bulls versus bears, we are bullish the U.S. dollar. Go USA, even though the U.S. dollar means that we have probably a slower job growth, uh, higher unemployment and lower inflation, right? However, when the dollar goes up, it also is a, it's good for importers, right? Not good for exporters. Exporters makes our goods more expensive. But if you're an, imp if you're an importer, you can buy more stuff at a cheaper price because the dollar is um, in the driver's seat. Okay. Uh, we can drop down a four hour chart too, and we got nice, this is the, probably the beginning of a new dollar run going into the FOMC minutes. And you know, we break down, you know, we can see a move back to the 10, was it 106? No, no, not 106, maybe 106, 10370, we're at 10319, so we can see a nice up move there. Bulls versus bears, we're a bullish dollar index. Okay, let's go to the Euro, the anti-dollar. And the, uh, we're going to start with a monthly chart there and move all drawings. And we can see that uh, we have a, a, a bullish, a bearish engulfing candle on the monthly, barely, kind of not, not really engulfing yet, but it's still moving on, moving on down, right? After we had a high around the 110.96 area, almost one, almost got to 111. And it's kind of like, ah, kind of ran out of juice there, right? And let me just get rid of this baby here. Okay. All right. So we got we got this drop, right? Downward trend on the monthly, going in the opposite direction, right? Right. Yeah, we got some upward fibs, downward fibs that we were we're hitting off of too, off the fifty percent retracement. Let's have a mirror image, a mirror image of the U.S. dollar inverted image. And we're just working our working our way down, you know. But that's the monthly. Uh, let's move down to a weekly chart, like a pseudo double top. And we have some support that's coming in as well. Support coming in at the um, 105, one spot 0525 area, looking for a price for the euro to continue to move down 
move on down, like the Jeffersons uh, played backwards. Moving on down, moving on down. There we go. And so we've got some support down there after uh, coming off this almost near the 111 highs. Bulls versus bears. We are bearish on the euro. Um, looks like we're getting a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of a rally here. Uh, but I look for it to uh, sell any rallies, look to sell any rallies. Again, it's not a trade recommendation, but that's what I'm looking to do uh, when I get off this call. Looking for, you know, we're looking for Manic, Manic Monday, Turnaround Tuesday. We'll probably be up for the, the remainder of today. And probably Tuesday, we'll start resuming our downward move down, right? In fact, there's our our turn, you know, approaching our turn, go up and make our turn and we'll drop. Looking for a break below 107.95. You can break that support, then it's a sled ride down for some pips. We won't find any support until we get down to 107.61. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. And then you, know, you can actually do a little, little Oh, wrong one. Okay. Well, let's go back. Okay. Like this. Yeah, we do short position. Our the risk and the reward. That's that's what we're that's what we're looking for. Okay, let's move on right along to the pound GDP US. We do have some news coming out there and we've been tearing this up too and in class we usually do a really good deep analysis going out to a monthly chart and you can see that um you know we are been on a downtrend for really many years really think about it down 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 and then now we're at the peak of another cycle And we can probably see uh, some further, further move down. You know, we can take our dip from the top to the bottom, and we can see that um, you know, again we're at fifty percent retracement. We may have lower. We're making lower lows, lower highs, and we expect price to come back down. Uh, twenty four, twenty five. Uh, where are we at? Twenty four. Sorry, twenty four. 24, 28, right? We might we might go up a little bit to you no know, Manic Monday, turn around Tuesday, got two dojis in decision, right? For the weekly, kind of well, we're looking for a break south. Bulls versus bears. We are bearish the pound and bullish the dollar. We can go down to a daily chart. You can see that we have this. Topping, and now we're doing lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We're stair stepping our way down. As long as we can stay below the uh, turning point we had here, about the 126.76 area, then we should continue to move our way down. Um, and we can take FIPS from the bottom to the top here. We can use those to target areas of support. We can target the 50% retracement at one spot, 2236. That's like, you know, 100 and almost, yeah, 100, like 100 pips away, maybe 97 pips away. And this 2133 looks interesting too. There's a cluster of support back here. So we can see maybe this area here, this. 121.33 coming into play. There's like a little, a lot, a lot of uh, jiggling it up and down, jiggling there, like they were marking that out for a possible target. For a daily four hour chart, we are rallying up against the trend line and we're on a turning point down. Again, we're well on our way for a downward move. Okay. Okay, hope that was helpful there. Um, let's go ahead and look at AUD USD. 
take a quick look you look you up there and we were chopping that up too and this has really been uh heading heading south the land down under well, guess what this the currency down under it's going down under that's right and even though they're raising rates as well, they say, well, Greg, they're hiking interest rates. Go, yeah, they are, but you know, on a relative basis, you know, the, the Fed's probably ahead of them, right? And, and we can see that lower swing highs, lower swing lows, right? Broke a rising trend line. And we can uh, come back to uh come back to retest this low. Uh, and that is uh, 66.04, right? And then we have another level of support that uh, was tagged back in um, April 28th at the 65.73. So bulls versus bears, you know, very easy. So once you know the direction of the dollar, then you've got the direction of the, the majors, right? So let's go ahead and move, move on, move, keep on moving. Okay. Well, let's take a dollar yen, USDJPY. It, you know, with the you know, Japanese are forever, you know, they're they're looking at um at at weakening their currency to increase demand. You know, we can see that we have a nice pullback, but this is a or let's go to a monthly chart, uh just an, an upward. Upward trend, very clear trend here. One of the clearest trends you can see in technical analysis is the dollar versus the yen, with the, with the Japanese keeping rates at gener no just multi multi generational lows, uh, negative interest rate, the zero interest rates and zero and the, and the interest rates are just negative. They maybe they maybe they were zero for a long time. But the interest rate differential, and you think if it's 4.25 here and it's zero there, then why would you borrow in yen and hold dollars? And that's what's going on, you know. They sell JGBs and buy other currencies and assets, causing their currency to weaken. And that way people can buy more Sony PlayStations and more Lexuses and Toyotas, right? Exports, export-driven economy needs a week it becomes an addiction. They have to. Uh, they can even people say, "Well, how long do they continue to do that?" Well, they've been doing it for a long time. I mean, look at this, you know. So, bulls versus bears. We definitely look at uh, this to can this trend to continue, and we're at uh, one thirty-seven eighty-nine. We probably see a move back toward one fifty-one. Won't happen all at one time, but there's also some intermediary stops. At one forty, one fifty-five. You know, it's just uh, yeah. We could see continued strength as we uh, break these levels and we start hitting new highs. Dollar yen. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move on to the. Uh, we're going back to the economic calendar so we can make sure that we are covered everything that we are going to talk about. All right. Oh, no, like that. Right. Economic calendar, because we checked we check the, the euro, and I mean, we've, yeah, basically, you know, the, the, we want to take a look at the maybe the SP 500. SPX 500 is a CFD. That we can use and re remove all drawings and you can see that we are still you know i think the market seems like the market is awaiting some type of resolution in the debt ceiling because uh you know we are basically in, in very head and shoulders higher highs and higher lows and um it seems like the the bulls are winning Right, and we may move sideways. The month, the the this is the weekly chart, monthly chart, same way. It's very bullish. Weekly chart, extremely bullish. Daily chart, yeah. I mean, we're making we're we're making we. 
I mean, we're not breaking out like this trend here is a lot different than this one. This one's coiling up and, you know, it's being battered by bad news, it's being battered by high interest rates, but it's resilient. If you see how strong it is in face of all this crap, it's still pushing north. Um, so as long as we hold above, uh, say, 41.12, well, then we have a great chance to continue to uh, a new high. A relief rally could take us into the, the 43.19 area. So I'm bulls versus bears. I am short-term bearish, medium-term bullish. Uh, I think we get um, a relief rally that totally takes us out. Um, one last push up. And then we might pull back from there. But uh, I think this basing part just shows that the bears have unable, they had lots of opportunity. I mean, come on now, higher interest rates, higher fuel costs, inflation, uh, debt ceiling, uh, war in Ukraine, all this stuff going on, all the, the you have all this disaster that's going on in the market. And this is all the bears could possibly do, right? That's just telling you that, that this really wants to take off and fill he really gifted the, the, the 4,700 and beyond, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, I'm proverbial optimist. I'm thinking we're going to get much higher. I think we, we actually, I think we go back up to the, the, the four, the 4,800 area, right? Maybe double top there, but you know, may not get there today, but maybe by around December, January, we'll be in this area. Um, so that's other uh, than that. NASDAQ is, you know, tech heavy NASDAQ is also pretty intense. We have breakout to this area, and we did break out, as I said, as I had said. Uh, I said that we'll probably stop there. We can see that price did come back, but it's retesting the backside of this old breakout point, is acting as support. So I'm going to take off my, I said, well, I said, we go up there and we would bounce and, but I'm thinking that we might even go higher than this now that we broke out. We hit this target and then we came back and we tagged it. I think we um, actually like that airplane that went by probably go higher. Right. And there's some more resistance back here. And we can see maybe the fourth, 14,285 on the NASDAQ 100. Now, there's a nice bit of gapping space that needs to be filled. We're retesting. If this holds, if this old area of support, old resistance becomes new support, this was resistance back on uh, August 17, 2022. And now this is acting as support now on May 23rd, 2023, 20, or 22nd, 2023. And so we, if we bounce there, we could get a tremendous move higher, especially if we get a relief rally from a, a debt ceiling raise, right? So, uh, so guys, I know it sounds like gloom and doom out there, but people don't take this stuff take this stuff with a grain of salt because they do this all the time. And believe me, as old as I am, they have done this over and over and over again. They say, "Oh, things are so bad, and things are going to collapse, and there's a possibly a recession." Because they get you out of the market, you go into cash, and then they buy up all the assets on the cheap, right? And then they so shoot it up, and now you're going, oh man, I should have, I should have, would have, could have, right? So I mean, there's old Wall Street saying that you should buy when there's blood in the streets. And I'm not telling you what the buyer to sell, but just don't. Well, don't don't listen to, to some talking hit on CNBC that says, oh yeah, things are so terrible. And uh, this is so bad because you know, they really don't want you to buy anything. They want you to stay on the sidelines. They want you to use them and not think for yourself. But they, um, and they really should make it illegal for them to even talk about stuff because they tell you one thing and then they're out doing something else or they're talking their book, right? Oh yeah, it's terrible. Then you get out, they buy on the cheap, right? So that they'll, they'll tell you out in NASDAQ, they'll tell you to go to, you know, go to cash and keep your money on the sidelines. Meanwhile, they're buying everything on the cheap and things are going higher. You know, um, here's a, there's a stock that I was looking at. 
yeah, little stock here called Amazon. And it was dropping and they were talking how bad it was. They're laying off people, blah, 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 blah. And I said, man, we got a gap fill over here and old highs, inverted head and shoulders. Trend line break was the entry and boom, we're at 116, right? That's that's how we roll. And I people say, well, Greg, you just trade Forex. A chart's a chart's a chart. I've been doing this for 30 years. You can apply my method to any. I'm agnostic when it comes to, I believe in Jesus, but I'm agnostic when it comes to financial instruments and what to trade. This will work for gold, silver, oil, gas, frozen concentrate, orange juice. It doesn't really matter. A chart's a chart is a chart. Yeah, you have contract specifications and delivery, blah, 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 but it's still fear and greed on the chart. Buyers and sellers, bulls and bears, right? And anyone who charges you extra for knowing, learning a different type of market, well, it's the same market, right? So here's our gold, our gold trade. We didn't really make the retest. But it it's, goes in the same direction as the dollar. And the dollar has been going in the opposite direction of the dollar. The dollar has been going up, and this has been going down because it's priced in dollars, XAU USD, right? But it's slowing down. We got to a low about 1949 or so, 1952, and now we're bouncing back. So we could have some, again, people, things are setting up for a possible relief rally, you know, where people think that. Um, now, bulls versus bears on a monthly chart, we can see that, uh, you know, we have, let me remove all the drawings there, that we have spiked. And I'm not a believer in the triple the triple top here. I think that, you know, this goes much higher, breaks north. Um, the short term, I'm bearish. I'm bearish gold. Medium term, the long term, I am bullish. Um, once the, once the Fed gives a signal that they were going to stop hiking interest rates, probably after June, we could see uh, gold actually break 2100 and keep going higher, right? But remember, we're dealing with XAU slash USD, gold priced in dollars. And if they keep raising rates, which they are, then there is no way that this can rally for any length of time. Yeah, it may do counter trend rally, blah, blah, blah. But they're just positioning themselves where you can reshort it again at a higher level, right? So every time it goes up, you short it again, right? Short, go up. Short, resell. Short, goes up again, reshort, right? So this is what's this is the pattern that's going on right now. Gold's at the 1975-49. It's these, these years are interesting, right? It'd be cool if it got down to 1933, which is the year they confiscated gold. And uh, that would be a very significant. Sometimes you will see the market makers actually take prices down to significant years. Just like the Tenement Square, they took the Shanghai Composite down. It was like the reverse year of the, of the, of the, um, of the massacre at Tenement Square when the protesters were protesting. And they took price down that low, and the numbers actually created the date of when that event happened. And you'll see stuff in the market like that. That's very strange. They have that kind of control, which they can bring price down to the penny, right? So I'm thinking if we went down to 33, that could be somebody telling us something that they confiscate gold in 33. Where are they going to confiscate next, right? Anyway, that's... I'm basing this based on. He's like, well, great. What what basis are you? Um, that's a year on the chart. The 1933 is like, well, that doesn't sound very scientific. Okay, you want some scientific? I'm just making this up as I'm going right now. But I'm led to do this: take the high, take the low, and project it out. And um, yeah, that was the that was the relative high. I don't know, or it was the relative high. Anyway, we'll make a difference, right? Okay, well, the 618 is 1939, and 100% expansion is 1912. So it didn't. It'd be really interesting if it was like 33 right there, then it would be spooky, right? If I probably say, did you choose the right high grade, or did you take this one instead, right? 
And if you took this one instead, then no, it doesn't, it doesn't match either. Or if you took the very high, right? Then we don't, we don't, we don't get, yeah, no, we don't get anything there. Or you know, if you took, and then you can, then you start curve fitting, right? It's like, if I just took this one here, right? The 33 come up here, 45 and 17, right? So no. But um, so if we were doing uh, projections, uh, yeah, 1945 is 100 and 127% uh, expansion down here, or 1.27, I'm sorry. The same thing, right? That would take us, that would take us not to here, but take us to that line right there, projecting that out. 1945, and there would, there would be support down, there would be some support here right, at 1951. So the trend is down on gold, and any rally in gold looks like an opportunity to get short. Uh, but uh, I think after the debt ceiling and the FOMC minutes, we could see, so short term short, medium term long, okay. Um, so that that's it. Let's check one more let's Bitcoin BTC USD for those people, those Bitcoin people. And you can see that we have uh, no, this is our monthly chart, and it's bearish. We got this big hanging bearish candle, like blur, right? So, and so we've got the downward trend. Change your friend to lambs, right? Boy, we did a powerful coaching session on trading with the trend on Monday, and my students are still buzzing from it and posting their winning trades just from aligning their mindset with the, with a with a trend because you can follow the trend lose money, right? Timing of that trend is very important. Use the weekly. Weekly, nice bounce from that whole number, round number at 30,000 area. And we're coming down on that, right? And um, well, we made some stair steps, though, higher highs and higher lows. And in order for this to be a total reversal, we would need to break this low. And I'm not, and I don't think we'll get a full reversal. I think we'll get pretty close to it. But if we, I say, we get a debt ceiling settlement, this could go up dramatically, right? You could see a move back toward the the, the fourth that forty eight thousand area, and so then we have some, the, maybe like the rule of symmetry that what we did on one side we can do on the other, and this like marks our middle part, and so we can see a downward move on one side and then an upward move. On the other side, which would take us to the to the old high, All right? Now that's given that the Fed gives us a green light and says, "Hey, we're not going to do more of this interest rate hiking stuff. We're good. We're good now. We've destroyed enough jobs and everything, and everything's cool. We did a little reset, a little system reset here. We cut away the fat." And now we got a new debt ceiling and uh, we're set to go. And when we do, see, many people have positioned Bitcoin as an alternative to the dollar. And it's really an asset to be purchased with dollars, not as an alternative. But they will not allow an alternative to exist. The dollar is the number one product produced by the federal government. And so they are not going to allow this coin to replace it so and once you realize that this is just a trade and not an asset you'll start making a ton of money with this okay with that again my name is dr greg mcleod i want to thank you for being with me for bulls versus bears the weekly forex forecast make sure you go to elite traders university website and down consume some more free material that we have for you and if you're re ready and willing and have the resources to invest in yourself, then, uh, then then look for a strategy call with me or a member of my team. Would love to have you become a professional trader in 90 days or less. Do it yourself. You may get it might get old after a while. You know, if you're circling around the block for about two, three, four, five years, 
and you want to shave all that time off of your off of your um off of your experience you know you can either there's two ways you can do it but it's going to cost you it could cost you time so why well, not your own good greg you know uh, i got youtube videos and i've got you know, i got a really good group i'm part of and then um, that's fine and five or six ten years later you're still in the same spot versus hmm all the money I missed out if I had gone with Greg by learning faster, cutting through all the weeds and all the bad stuff that's out there, benefiting from all of Greg's mistakes, and then being able to get there faster. That's that's your alternative. Um, because you're going to either pay me in your losses anyways, I take the other side of your trades, because you're probably going to be on the other side of my trades, and I'll make money on them. Or you're going to be on our team, on our side of the trades, making money. But either way, you're either gonna pay in losses or you're gonna pay in tuition. One will be very slow, like death by a thousand paper cuts. And one will be by, gee, I'm investing in edu quality education from a Wall Street insider. This is a pretty, this is a no brainer, right? And with all the resources and help, uh, help you to get your prop trading account, you can more than 10X what you are, what you're currently invest, okay? Yeah, my name is Dr. Greg McLeod. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. If you felt a spark here and want to see how these principles can be used in your own trading, go to www.elitetradersuniversity.com forward slash apply to book a free session with our team. We have helped hundreds of people remove the frustration and obstacles in trading to become consistent, highly profitable traders. These are proven principles that just work. Happy pipping!